Hello and uh, namaste everybody. Today is uh, Mahashtami, so a very happy Mahashtami to all of you. And I would like to start with a prayer that we offer on all these days to Goddess Durga. Uh, this small prayer is actually not for uh, doing japa or uh, prarthana, uh, because uh, she's a warrior goddess out here. So we are praying her in that form. So we offer Pushpanjali or chants of flower to her. And that is the time we just say this mantra. So Shashti, Saptami, Mahashtami, Mahanavami. These are the four days that these flowers are definitely uh, offered to her. There is also a Mula mantra by which she is worshipped. And when the ending Homa is done on Navami, it is done with the Mula Mantra. But again, let me warn you, these mantras are not for us to chant in the house, okay? Nor to be recited as prayers, but we can just do it once when we see her and offer uh, the flowers to her. Amongst all the days, today Ashtami, uh, is the most crucial because the battle of Rama against Ravana also uh, heats up at this time. And uh, on Mahashtami day, on the exact Mahurta Sandhi between Ashtami and Navami is the time it is said that Ravana's head had fallen. The Mahurtas are 48 minutes. So that 48 minutes between Ashtami and Navami, uh, one of the most sacred pujas are performed for that 48 minutes. It is called the Sandhi Puja. It is said that it is the pinnacle or high form, high point of spirituality. And it is very auspicious to see the puja wherever you are. It can occur in the middle of the night. It can occur in the middle of the day, depending when that Tithi Sandhi falls. But Ashtami is the day where women dress up in their bridal reds or white with reds. It is absolutely the high point. Uh, traditionally, a sacrifice is made. Nowadays, the sacrifice is made symbolically with a vegetable, like with a large squash. And the sacrifice is symbolic of demolishing all that is evil. So I will just start with a prayer. ओ महेशोगी महामाये चामुंगे मुंडमथनी आयु आरोग्य विजयम् देहि देवी नमस्तुते ओम दक्षयज्ञ विनाशिन्याय महागुरायै Yogini Koti Paribritayai Bhadrakalyai Om Sri Durgayai Vaushat. So the first two lines said, Om Mahishogni Mahamaye Chamunde Munda Mathani. Mahishogni means referring to the Mahishasura, the demon. Mahamaye addressing Mahamaya. Chamunde, addressing Chamunda, because the root Devi is the ferocious warrior goddess Chamunda. Munda Mathani, the one who removes the kills of everybody's head, including the demon's head. And by the removal of head, of course, we mean the removal of Ahankara. Ayur Arogya Vijayam Vehi Devi Namastute. Ayu means longevity. Arogya means uh, Removal of all diseases. Vijaya means victory. Dehi Devi. I'm telling Devi, please give it to me. Namastute. Because uh, the warrior goddess, or in this form of Durga, it is a very Rajasic form. She was worshipped by all royal families. And these pujas were not really conducted by householders, but by conducted by the royal families. And even now in Eastern India, in all the three or four states, it is conducted by communities. A big, uh, you know, uh, dais is constructed on the roads, in the parks, where this puja takes place. So 
you can see that the things that we are praying for and asking her, are you longevity, arogya, uh, lack of disease or removal of disease, vijaya, victory, it's very, very rajasai. So uh, those are the things that we are asking, Dehi Devi, God has given to me. And then the Mula Mantra, which is also said, uh, the Bija Mantra that is offered over here is Vaushat, as you see, because Vaushat is used in Pushpanjali. The correct Bija to be used when offering in Pushpanjali, especially in very public worships and pujas, is Vaushat. So she is referred to, this is the Chamunna Mula Mantra, Om Daksha Yagya Vinashinyai, meaning one who is the destructor or demolisher, one who destroys the yagya of daksha because you know she took that ferocious form and had danced and had destroyed the yagya of her father daksha because he did not invite shiva following which of course she was killed and then you know shiva got angry and shiva did the tandava so all this energy is very very ferocious so she's referred to here as om daksha yagya vinashinyai maha ghorai Maha Ghora, Daksha Yagya Vinashini, that's her name, because we are addressing her, so is Vinashini. So Daksha Yagya Vinashini, Maha Ghora, meaning one Ghora means that which is like the dark clouds, very ferocious. Maha Ghora, the great ferocious one. Maha Ghora, Yogini Koti Paribritai. Paribrita means to be surrounded by, to be escorted by. A koti, a million, a crores, a billions of yoginis. Yoginis are again dark energy, but she marches into battle with the yoginis, with the dakinis. Not at other times. This is not Mahalakshmi Rupa. This is the battle Rupa, okay? Daksha Yagya Vinashinai Maha Ghorayai Yogini Koti Paribritai Bhadra Kali, Bhadra Kali Rupa. Bhadra Kali Rupa, though the term Bhadra is over there, which means auspicious, but Bhadra Kali is a very, very ferocious form of hers. So when Shiva dumps the Tandav and when Sati's body is demolished and Sati has died and when Durga has died and Shiva has taken her on his shoulder and dumps the Tandav, uh, that in that Pralaya Rupa, in that uh, energy of destruction from his body, two forms come, that is Veera Bhadra and Bhadra Kali. So Veera Bhadra and Bhadra Kali are very ferocious form. That's why in this war mode, she is Bhadra Kali. Very strangely, you know, Bhadra Kali word, Bhadra means auspicious. Bhadra Kali is also associated with Saraswati. <laughs> so these uh, dichotomies are there. So, Maha Ghoraye Yogini Koti Paribritaye Bhadra Kalyai Reem Om Durgaye Vaushat. Sometimes it is said Reem Om Srimad Bhagavad Durgaye. In the uh, more spiritual maths and missions, when they do the prayer, they always add Srimad Bhagavad Durgaye because she is the Bhagavad, the divine. All right. So, Om Daksha Yagya Vinashinai. Maha Ghorayai Yogini Koti Paribritayai Bhadra Kalyai Reem Om Srimad Bhagavad Durgayai Kaushat. That is a Pushpanjali Mantra. I will repeat my uh, warning to you. Do not do Japa and do not do these mantras several times otherwise because it is pure war energy to be done at that time when it is necessary. Okay, so that's why these mantras are though publicly known, but we do not share it publicly. But it is Mahashtami, and uh, I, since I was supposed to be physically there with you, I would have shared this mantra with you. In the uh, Om Gurave Nama, Om Gurave Nama. Om Gurave Nama. So with the uh, prayer to Guru, we are going to start today's topic, which is about Arura and the moon. Our Advaita Sanatana Dharma, Advaita Vedanta, through the Upanishad, tells us that there is only but 
one truth. There is only one Satya. And that Satya is the Satya Sanatana Nirguna Brahman. That Brahman who is without any attribute, who is but the Omkara and beyond Omkara, beyond sound, and the truth itself, that is the only truth. And everything else that exists, everything else, is but an illusion, is a falsity. He is the only truth and everything else is false, is a lie. Everything else means not only this created universe that we are living in, the fact that we are sitting, that we are having this conference, that we have this beautiful planet and the stars and the nakshatras. Above that, that there were the tattvas, that there was even the gunas, that there are even the sound, that even omkara or even the white light, nothing. Absolute nothingness. All this is illusion. Everything starting from the gunas onwards, everything is an illusion. Everything is a lie. And this lie is a... But because we think it is not a lie, because we think that this is the truth, that is why it is an illusion. Okay? This illusion in Sanskrit is called Maya. And I know very well that all of you are who are, are esteemed astrologers sitting here, all of you are very well aware of what I'm talking about. This Maya, as we call this illusion, this Maya is none other, this whole creation has been done by none other than Goddess Durga, the Mahamaya, the Divine Feminine. Because the divine feminine is the one who, who is mobile. This concept is actually very well explained through the iconography of Goddess Kali. In the iconography of Goddess Kali, you can see that there is Kali who is in a very uh, uh, agitated mood and she is doing the war dance and her foot falls on her husband Shiva who is like a corpse. So they say that that corpse Shiva represents the Satya Sanatana unmoving truth or the Brahman. But when the creation process started taking place, we started with the uh, movement of the Gunas, that at that point, the Nirguna Brahman, the Brahman separated into Prakriti and Purusha, male and female. And that immediate separation, that female form is the Kali. She was separated so that she could create and the creation start with the guna. So she's guna mai and guna vati. And that is why she dances. The more she dances, the more agile she is, the more movement there is. That means that Braja's guna has come in and creation takes place, followed by the colors, the nada, the shabda, the tattvas, the tadmatras. Uh, the world, the 14 bhuvanas, the nakshatras, the grahas, and down to us, the animal and the plant kingdom. So we are talking about Mahamaya today because Arura is all about the domain of Mahamaya. Because we believe that that the human personalities that is there, our lives, it is a collage of created images. It's a mixture of that which is real and that which is illusionary. A mixture of that which is satya and that which is actually not there. Where aruras are concerned, they are associated with that which is not there. We say, when you first learn about arura, that arura is associated with maya. And Maya, as we talked about right now, is illusion, is deceit. We, uh, you know, when we talk about supernatural trickery and sorcery, we also call it Maya. That this is Maya B, somebody who is actually, uh, uh, you know, who's a sorceress. We call them Maya B. That they have the power to cast an illusion. It's a bit of a little bit of a Rahu-like thing, but it's not fully Rahu-like thing because we are taking the baby's energy out there also. That which is an apparition, that which is also can be fraud because that is not real. It is an image which is tangible, which manifests. All right. And therefore, it is different because we cannot really, the Satya of the reality is something that we cannot measure. 
that which is not tangible. Whereas this is something we can measure and that which is tangible. Let me give an example. To us, a very, it is a very strong reality that right now you are having the conferences there in me. Right now, I'm giving this talk to you. Uh, at this very moment, uh, you know, there is a war going on in the Middle East. Uh, at this very moment, the temperature over there may be a 13 degrees centigrade. You're feeling the cold, you're feeling the chill. You may step up and you may see some snow or some beautiful trees. And you may think that, but all this is real. I am experiencing this. So how can this be Maya? How can this be an illusion? But it is actually uh, an illusion, but we are experiencing it. We can measure it. So Maya, that which is created, this is a created illusion, is actually tangible because it is manifested tangible, manifested reality. But what we can't really measure is that which is satya, that which is the truth. He is the one who is unmeasurable. He is intangible. We cannot catch him. But he is the only truth. So these concepts are very difficult at once to grasp, as it is difficult to understand the concept of Aruda. So basically, when we are perceiving Maya, we are perceiving this like a mirror image, that it leads to the truth, but it is not the truth itself. All right? The mirror is showing the truth, but it is not the truth itself. The entire creation we can experience it, but it is an illusion. It is a created reality only. Similarly, we can say that the Arura is exactly like that. The reality, the Satya Peter is the Lagda, which very few people know. Nobody really knows. Everything is Arura. I may have multiple Aruras, and my Arura right now here to you is a lecturer. Uh, when I go to uh, teach next month, my Arura will change from a lecturer to a teacher. Uh, when I'm at home, uh, my Arura is that of a wife. Uh, when I go to my parents' home, my Arura is that of a daughter. When I go to work in my office, my Arura is that of a boss. When I was young or when I sit in a class uh, given by Guruji, my Arura is that of a student. All right. We have different Aruras. We have different masks. These are tangible because you're actually seeing us in it, this way. Because this is created, hence the Karaka for Arur Lagna is Chandra or the moon. And because this entire creation is done by, of this beautiful universe, is done by the great goddess Mahamaya. And therefore the moon representing the Divine Mother, representing the Divine Feminine, becomes the Karuka of the Arura Lagna. It is that same energy that it is a reflected energy. All right? It is a created illusion. That is why I started by discussing and prayer to the Divine Mother, that this is all about the realm of the Divine Mother. Indeed, today's uh, conference, I mean, the entire three days of conference, because the focus is on the moon, is about the Divine Mother. So uh, it, that is the reason why we begin with her prayer also, and that is the reason why we begin by talking about her as well. So all of you know that the concept of Arura is based on the reflection of light and the original light is that of the sun and the moon only has a reflected light. Nevertheless, we refer to the moon as a luminary in Jyotish, but it is reflected light. The original lights are with the sun and with the nakshatras. All right, so the moon is basking in the reflected light. It is throwing that light back like the pinhole camera and reversing the image like the pinhole camera does. So the brain is receiving this image like a pinhole image. And Rahu and Ketu who are there in our brains are reversing this image. And they are grouping these images in our brain and storing them in 
different categories of emotion. And these groups are 12 in number, and hence there are 12 Arurapadas. Now, if we want to know the satya or the reality of each of the images, then we will have to reverse each of these images which are stored in our brain. So, as you can see, when moon is born, moon is born in the mind, Rahu and Ketu are created, Rahu is created immediately along with the moon. The moon comes with the... Uh, package of the nodes. Therefore, if the moon is creating these images by reversing them in our mind through a reflected uh, mode, the nodes immediately are reversing them in our head altogether. So therefore, when we are looking at Arura, and we are going to uh, today examine only that part of Arura, which really is associated with moon. All right. Because we have said that moon is the karaka, moon is like Maya, show, not is showing the reflected light. It is not showing the true light because the true light is that of the Satchit Ananda, of the Satchit Sanatana Brahman. But she as Maya Maya is showing us the reflected light and is creating tangible realities through that reflected light, which are real but not real. And then what we are seeing are a mixture of the real and not real. So we are only going to today discuss that part of the moon. Now, this is the Arura Chakra. I'm just going to go over this because we are not really going to discuss this. But it is important for us to refresh our mind so that we know the Arura Chakra. So the Arura Lagna with the Karaka Chandra over there, the Arura Lagna represents our manifested image. All right, that is how the world sees you. Uh, my Arura, that is my original Arura. Uh, you know, those of you who have really studied Arura, you know Aruras change and shift with time. All right, as we change, Aruras shift with time, depending on whether the first or seventh from Arura is stronger or whether we make certain choices in life by which our Arura changes. We may change profession, we may change our style of lifestyle or the way we are, the way we are working. Aruras also can change when there are dual lordships of Lagna. So there can be two Aruras and then we choose which is a strong Arura. So we basically start with a calculated Arura. If my calculated Arura is Makara or Capricorn with Saturn and Ketu in it, that is my calculated Arura. That is my manifested image. And that may change because I'm not the eldest born. So it is not Makara, it is Karka with Venus and Rahu in it. But my main Arura is this. That is the manifested image. I will see my Arura Chakra from there. But my Lagna is Pisces with no Grahas over there. And so do people see me as Pisces or will they see me as Makarho with Saturn Ketu there. And in reality, very few people really get to see the real you. Very, very few people get to glimpse the Satya Pita. So this is the manifested image. And that image which has become manifested really becomes the reality. The second from Arura is our real wealth. It is also our support system. The third from Arura Lagna the main VCR relationships over there, but we also see conflicts, okay? How antagonistic am I? How conflictual am I? Or am I harmonious by nature? That those things will manifest over there. The fourth from it will show the peace in my heart as well as a real home I'm living in. The fifth will tend to show the image changes which are there. What image changes are bringing coming about in my life? The sixth from Arura will show my weaknesses. The seventh from Arura is the Dwara or the door or through which I can interact with actually the, uh, with the world, with the world ahead of me. The eighth from Arura are my very serious troubles. The ninth from Arura is my protection. The 10th from Arura is my karma, the quality of my work. The 11th from Arura 
are my sources of income. Because you see, this is something, as you know, the Jyotishis really put a lot of importance in where Arura is concerned. Because Arura is a tangible manifested reality, therefore, the sources of income, when we see 11th Lord from Arura Lagna, is really more, uh, uh, more real, more potent than if we see it from 11th, how 11th Lord from Lagna. You know, 11th Lord from Lagna can show multiple things for us, whereas the 11th Lord from Arura Lagna will actually show really pointedly our sources uh, of uh, income. And similarly, the 12th house will show our sources of expenditure. This is a broad parameter by which we see because everything that is manifesting. So if we want to study our manifested uh, tangible reality, my quality of work, my sources of income, my changes of image, uh, how conflictual am I, am I? Am I all out there? I'm fighting. Uh, those things are very important. Very, very, because that's what's really coming out. Just keep these bhavas in mind, in the back of your mind, uh, when we are going to uh, study it. Now, the kendras of Arura are the most important planets in the horoscope because they control the manifestations of everything in life. All right? And this is because everything about the, uh, of the, uh, everything manifests through the Arura. Our life manifests through the Arura and the Arura manifests through its Kendra. Now your question would be, why does Arura manifest everything through its Kendra? That is because we said the Arura Lagna is the moon. Remember this, this is the most crucial thing I'm trying to tell you. Moon is the Karaka for Arura Lagna. But I'm now trying to tell you, so the Arura Lagna is the moon. When you look at the Arura Lagna, you are seeing the moon over there. And what you are going to see, how is the moon going to operate? And whether or not the moon is being tarnished, whether its image is being tarnished, whether it's being afflicted. So if the Arura is the moon and Chandra is strongest in its Kendra, because that's the ebb and flow of the tide, Surya, as we know, are strongest in its corners, all right? But Chandra operates through Kendras. And uh, uh, I, uh, assuming that I think Visti has talked about uh, Chandra Kendra uh, yesterday to you. Uh, I mean, I know that is the topic since I'm physically not there. This is also an Arura exercise. So uh, I know that he would have talked about Chandra Kendra and you would have learned by now that how important the kendras of Chandra are because the Chandra kendras are the ebb and flow of the tide. So because if the moon kendras are so important and if you are saying Arura Lagna is the moon, then the Arura also manifests through its kendras. All right. So this becomes very important. Amongst the Arura kendras, the Dwara, as I told you, the seventh house from Arura Lagna becomes very important because that is the point of the door through which I am con uh, connecting with the entire world, with all other beings. That is the Vaha. That Vaha means, you know, the seventh house from any Bhava. It is uh, sat on the domain of Vayu. And when Vayu is very strong, Vayu has the capacity to carry you, Vaha to do, Vahana to carry. So that is the point of Vaha. It shows from which way Am I being carried? What is the path of my life? So the seventh house of our Arura, Lagna, is very important because it's showing us a path of our life. We are being carried over there. Vaha. So now, planets in, all, in each of the Arura basically shows us the sources through which things manifest in our life. All right, I did mention how the uh, 11th Lord or even a planet over there in the 11th house from Arura Lagna are going to show the source of my income, right? If I have Saturn and Ketu, maybe I should, I can see that Ketu can be a source of my income. It's the 11th Lord from my Arura Lagna in Arura Lagna, which means that Jyotish can be a source of my income. So if I'm wise, I should not pursue other things. I should pursue things related to Ketu. Now I have to choose that. Is it Jyotish? Is it mathematics? Is it dancing? Is it meditation teacher? Is it yoga? Whatever. I chose Jyotish. So 
It depends on other factors in the chart. What are you choosing? What are you going? Through that, then my arura will rise and it will be a source of my income. All right. Grahas in all the aruras shows us sources through which the aruras manifest. And this effect is based on the lordship of the Kalpurusha. Okay. Now, talking more and more about the moon. So we said that the moon is the Karaka for Arura Lagna. Why? Like the great Mahamaya, whose day it is today, she is manifesting. And like our created universe, which the Mahamaya has done, the Arura is a combination of that which is real and that which is false. It's really that which is not real. Yet it is manifested and hence it is our tangible experience. The moon is always direct. It is always zodiacal. But we have said that Rahu and Ketu are wherever moon is there, wherever moon comes into the picture, Rahu and Ketu comes into the picture. All right. Ketu eclipses the moon. All of you know that. Whereas Saturn follows the moon. Therefore, we say that the houses are reckoned zodiacally from Arura Lagna, but because if, if Saturn is involved with it or moon or other planets are involved with it, but because Ketu eclipses the moon, if Ketu is in Arura Lagna, then we should count the houses in reverse. Many of you are aware of this rule. Senior astrologers are aware of this rule and they follow it. But the reason why I'm mentioning this to you, just to show you why it is important to see this from Arura Lagna. We do see it from Lagna, you know, but why is it important? Because of the importance of moon related to Arura Lagna and because Ketu will eclipse the moon. So we are looking at Grahas in Arura Lagna, especially our main Arura Lagna. Are those planets, what is their relation with the moon? What do they do to the moon? So, because Ketu has the power to the eclipse of the moon, Ketu will have strength. And if Ketu is over there, we will see planets are to be reckoned in the reverse. Whereas Shani follows the moon, therefore Shani is always direct. Because moon is direct and Saturn following moon will also be direct. So, if we have, but since Lagna is Satya Pita, Lagna uh, controls over that which is Arura Lagna. So if Saturn is in Lagna and even if Ketu is in Arura Lagna, Saturn will force a direct count because the Satya prevails over the Maya. All right? Now, Moon nourishes the Arura. Remember this. You are now getting the hand that moon is so important for the Arura. Moon is the Arura. Therefore, moon's role is moon nourishes the Arura. It promises social success, status, prosperity, well-being, fame, likable personality. Okay? All these kind of things. <clears throat> Rahu and Ketu along with it, I told you, will actually damage that. Now, Rahu brings ill repute. It shows excessive consumption. It shows excessive greed, which can come from denial and addictions. When Rahu is in Gochara in Arura Lagna, we have many people ask us, oh, Rahu is doing Gochara in Arura Lagna. We know when Saturn is in Gochara in Arura Lagna, how Saturn hits the moon by affecting our longevity. That's why health comes into the play over there. Lag the Arura Lagna and its trines, Saturn's transit affects our health. But what will Rahu do? Now, at one level, Rahu can give a lot of bhoga if it is transiting our Arura Lagna because it represents here, what I've written here, excessive consumption. That excessive consumption is coming also from greed. And so because of that, you will enjoy a lot of bhoga. But along with it, Rahu brings ill repute. So you can experience a lot of scandal if Rahu in Gochara is on Arura Lagna. And we do not like to have Rahu in the Arura Lagna in the natal horoscope. People who have that will be 
subjected to ill repute, will be subjected to scandal, will be subjected to a negative uh, personality. Such personalities will not be likable. But whereas at Moon is over there, such personalities will be likable. Ketu, as I told you, tends to eclipse the Moon. And so Ketu will show a different kind of a personality, will not be one who is cause, causing uh, maybe scandal, but can show somebody who is more like an um, renunciate, can be more like an ascetic, can be uh, more like somebody who's a sadhu, or can be somebody who's an elite, because Ketu when exalted can show somebody who's highborn, can be somebody who is a uh, elite, but in either way, Ketu tends to impoverish the Arura Lagna, because we can see that both Rahu and Ketu are taking away and impoverishing the Arura Lagna. Moon is nourishing the Arura Lagna, but the nodes who come along with the moon are impoverishing the Arura Lagna. Where Rahu can bring scandal, Ketu necessarily may not bring you scandal, although of course you can say Ketu can also be a thief negatively, but Ketu will impoverish maybe through uh, different ways. Okay? Therefore, a Jupiter or a Venus or the good uh, Grahas over there in Arura Lagna, natural benefits are wonderful planets to have over there because they are supporting over there. Jupiter gets exalted in uh, uh, moon sign. And so Jupiter delights being in the Arura Lagna, gives you so much of likability, so much of fame. You may be something else. Maybe, you know, you have Rahu in your Lagna and Jupiter in your Arura Lagna. Then it's a different uh, picture or the different story uh, altogether. Therefore, we are going to see that how is moon from the different bhavas of Arura Lagna, though because the moon nourishes it. So as I told you that moon nourishes the Arura Lagna, one more thing I must point out, that Aruras are taught in accesses of houses. All right, they are not taught in simply. So 1, 7, 2, 12, uh, 3, 11, they are taught, uh, 3, 9, all right, uh, 2, 8, uh, 4, 10, they are actually uh, studied in accesses and param axis of bhavas. So if the moon is in Arura Lagna, is in the first house from Arura Lagna, or in the seventh house from Arura Lagna, in the one seven axis, uh, then it can grant you undenying fame. Of course, our examples are always with the two avatars, that is with Sri Rama and Sri Krishna, who were born with moon in Lagna, Sri Ram was Karka Lagna with moon in Lagna, Swashetra along with Jupiter and Sri Krishna is Taurus Lagna with moon exalted or Ucha in Lagna. In fact, he is supposed to be Vargottama Taurus Lagna. So they have undying fame over years and years to come. So moon will naturally, it is nourishing that image. It is nourishing your manifested image. It will continue to nourish it and hence it grants you uh, uh, fame. It is considered the best placement to have moon in 1-7 from Arura Lagna. Now, the 4-10 uh, from Arura Lagna is also actually good because remember we said that the uh, Kendras, that the Arura manifests through its Kendras. So therefore, the 4-10 from Arura Lagna is also good. And both the 4-10 axis uh, can contribute to the good karma that you will be doing. Are you doing good karma or are you not doing good karma? But actually from after the 1-7 axis, the next place you can actually say are the 5th and ninth houses. A moon is placed in the 5th and ninth from Arura Lagna as the placement of moon. So we are, doing, we are saying something slightly different. We say that all the Kendras of Arura Lagna are very important because the Arura manifests through its Kendras because Arura is like Chandra. But if we are going to examine Chandra's placement from Arura Lagna, we said the best placement was from the 1 and 7 because it gives you fame. We say the second best is the 5 and 9 the fifth and ninth from Arura Lagna, because it can give you a lot of prosperity. And you can also receive a lot of affection because it can. that means your Arura is also nourished over there. 
Why are the fifth and nine considered also very good? Because when we are studying the Lagna, Lagna is always studied in trines or any of the bhavas we study in trine. It is in trikona form. So that is why if we are looking at at the first house, we have to see the fifth and ninth house. If we are seeing the second house, we have to see the sixth and tenth house because the manifestation is also through the, this is the basics of Jyotish, but we are just reminding it. So also the person will experience a lot of affection. It is a positive manifestation and the prosperity and will also the person can achieve a lot of prosperity. All right. Next, uh, we have said what is good is the fourth and the tenth house. We are also seeing that the second and the twelfth house are also good. Okay, in the second and the twelfth house, you can get a lot of well-being and peace. Now, if you see the Arura chakra, you will see that in the Arura chakra, this second house is the house is a source of um, income. Is a house is the source of wealth and income over there. So, not the source of wealth. But pardon me, it is a source of wealth. So because it is a source of wealth, it gives you wealth, it also gives you peace and well-being. Now, this concept of the moon placed in the second and twelfth, giving peace and sense of well-being is actually derived from the concept of Shubha Shubha Yoga. As you know, in the concept of Shubha Shubha, Shubha Yoga, we say that grahas which are placed in our lagna impact us, our mind, the way we are, our head, the way we are thinking. And similarly, the uh, planets which are there in the second and the twelfth house are uh, also in the uh, uh, impact us. For example, if you have no grahas over here, or maybe you have a Jupiter over here or a moon over here, and you have malefic grahas in the second and twelfth from your lagna, those malefic grahas on the second and twelfth from your lagna are going to cause ashubha yoga on the lagna, meaning are going to cause to your thought processes those things which are not that great. Okay, so that is also extended over here where Chandra is concerned. So if Chandra is great being placed in Arura Lagna. Chandra is great placed in second and twelfth from Arura Lagna also because it is also giving you and nurturing you and giving you peace in the mind. What are the really bad houses from Arura Lagna? The bad houses from Arura Lagna are the sixth and the eleventh house out here because they can give you a lot of kasht, a lot of turmoils. A moon is placed in sixth and twelfth house. But what is worse than sixth and twelfth house is a moon is placed in the third and the eighth house. The placement of moon in the third and eighth house from Arura Lagna is considered the worst placement of moon. Okay? Because you see in the eighth house, it becomes like a Chandrashtama. And the third house is eighth there from eighth from the eighth is a Bhavad Bhavam concept. So the third and eighth, eighth from moon from Arul Lagna is the worst placement. So we can say that altogether three, eight, six, eleven are not great placements. We can say one, seven, five, nines are good placements and two, twelve, four, ten placements are also good All right, let us look at some case studies. Now, uh, when I'm going to do the case studies, of course, you will see that the charts I've chosen. There are so many other factors which are coming in and which will explain you the situation. So many times during conferences, I do not mention or go over all those details because, you know, uh, because of paucity of time. But uh, my intention is perhaps to try and bring out <clears throat> a variety uh, of cases to see where these placements are there. And then when you are studying, you can bring in all the other principles which will be there. I've seen a basic dasha. In this case, I've used the Vimshottar Yudhu dasha. We are looking at uh, uh, Arura over here. I will explain in many cases, even if there is uh, uh, some special conditional dashas, I usually experiment and see. And if I've seen that uh, Vimshottari, uh, Janma Vimshottari has worked well. Most of the charts I've taken up today and that's what I'm going to share with you. So we're going to start to uh, try and look up some example of moon in third and eighth from Arura Lagna because that's the worst one, I told you. So let's start with the worst because looking at fame and all is a no-brainer. So let us see in, in what different ways that your Arura is damaged. And when Arura is damaged, it means your manifested reality 
your life, your concrete life, your money, your work, everything is affected and damaged. Now, the first horoscope that I'm going to share over here is that of the Duke of Sussex. All right. Last year when I presented the paper, I took up his horoscope because he has Venus in a tremendous uh, sandhis, uh, nakshatra sandhis out there. Even then, he was uh, known as uh, Prince Harry, uh, His Royal Highness. Uh, recently, his uh, title, uh, the HRH, His Royal Highness title, as well as the title of Prince Harry has been removed. If you go to the website, it's only referred to as the Duke of Sussex and a uh, lot of damage to the Arula. So we will uh, refer to him as that. So, you know, when I see this horoscope and I see Dhanu Lagna with Guru in Lagna and I say how beautiful and you see that Venus, uh, though debilitated in the 10th house, that Venus we have discussed is not good because it has a lot of Nakshatra Sandhi out there, the, uh, you know, the Grahas in Sandhi. So that Venus is actually uh, not great out there. You'd have thought, oh, how lovely with that life. But then if you see the Arura, because his life really has been entirely tarnished and damaged by it. You can see that the Arura, there is no a dichotomy over Arura here, uh, is in Virgo. And you can see Moon is placed in 8 from Virgo in Aries. Okay. Now, this, the word that we have used is very bad. Now, in Janma Vimshottari, very interestingly, mostly everything happens to him in Rahu Dasha. All right, you can see that Rahu is there also second from moon. Over there, it happens in Rahu Dasha. Now, Rahu is placed over here uh, in ninth from Arur Lagna. You know that the ninth is the protection of the image. So Rahu over there is unable to protect the image and Rahu has damaged the image out there. Rahu will damage whereas Moon will nourish. I've given you the, uh, I didn't give you the years because I gave you the Dasha periods instead. So in Rahu Venus, so what happens in order? It begins by him first quitting the royal duties. Okay, of course a whole bunch of things has happened all his life. We are not going to get into that. So it begins by him officially quitting royal duties. That happens in Rahu Venus. They decided to step back. They give up all their colors. They cannot wear their uniform anymore. They cannot represent the crown anymore. All those uh, variety of things happen and uh, the uh, all the issues that are surrounded with it. Then in Rahu Sun, uh, the, the first Netflix series is aired. That is, uh, that series was called Rahu and Megan. Uh, sorry, I'm so sorry, Harry and Megan. That's a Freudian slip. But in that series, Harry and Megan, if you have watched it, uh, they come out all public where he really speaks out against his family, where actually Megan is also making fun of uh, the late queen, who was the queen at that time. Uh, normally, nobody. Uh, you know, touch the queen, even if they, even if, even though they abused everybody else. Uh, but she was uh, mocking the queen, and she was making fun of the queen. Uh, you know, with the whole uh, caricature of the courtesy thing, where she mocks, oh, you know, your Majesty, this that, and a whole bunch of things which even Harry speaks out there. So the so the so next in so the first was putting of the duties Rahu Venus Rahu Sun the Netflix series series comes up you can come up with uh, why with Rahu and Sun that happens um, then you can see in Rahu Moon spare his uh, memoir is published and of course that is when you know by the time uh, everything hits the fan things are really really out there. His image really goes by, uh, uh, goes down. His uh, popularity goes down tremendously. Even though the monarchy may have lost out on the popularity in the UK, but even then, Prince Andrew and the Duke of Sussex, Harry, has absolutely plummeting uh, popularity over there. 
the spare really digit that was in Rahu Moon. Then Rahu Moon again, the HRH title was removed. He was not to be called Prince Harry anymore, though the media was referring to him as Prince Harry, but actually uh, the website has also removed it. So that gets removed and he's only Duke of Sussex now over there. So Rahu Moon spare, Rahu Moon HRH title removed. Rahu Moon, he was asked to vacate Frogmore Cottage. Frogmore Cottage is, it was his official home out there. He was asked to vacate it and then he was given a date and he was asked to uh, officially hand over uh, the uh, keys. And after that, he actually has no place to stay over there. Very recently, he had gone over there because he wanted to pay his homage to his grandmother's uh, death centenary. And when he goes over there, he had no place to stay. And so he went up to stay at the Windsor Castle and he was told that he couldn't stay there. So if he wanted to stay in any of the royal estates or properties, he had to put in an application and request and only then. So if he goes there, he has to stay in a hotel or he has to stay with a friend. Now, this is not only a complete damage. I mean, I would consider what happened to him not only a complete damage of his arura, but I would uh, consider um, that the tangible reality of his world has also all gone. So all that he benefited all that he took for granted, having a home there, having those castles to pop in and pop out of, uh, all the other perks and goodies which goes along with it, everything is gone, right? Everything is gone and everything is de uh, demolished. So along with the image, your tangible reality that that image gives you, everything is destroyed. So not only is moon in eight, but Rahu in the ninth also cannot protect it. See both and everything happens in Rahu Dasha. Mostly everything, as you can see, is happening in Rahu moon. And it was also said recently that he can't see his father anymore, that if he has to see his father, he has to like, anybody else put in an application and request an appointment, okay? Now in Rahu Moon itself, after that, he filed four lawsuits against tabloids regarding invasion of privacy and also the fact that his securities were removed and he uh, applied to the British government to have security reinstalled, to have some sort of a security, which was all denied by the British government. And I think the lawsuits all also went terribly against him. They were not for him. And all of you are aware of this. So I really don't need to say this. So you can say that from Arura Lagna, this moon, moon is becomes very crucial. As I told you, moon is the key, not just as a karaka. Moon is the one who nourishes the karaka. And that moon has gone to the Maranakarak sthana, so which is one of the most terrible placements. So he has to experience this. And further, Rahu has also not uh, protected that image. So you can see in Rahu Dasha, all this damage happens to him. And uh, interestingly, Venus also shows the uh, visual world. Venus shows the, the visual media, the TV, the films. And we told you Venus was very bad for him being in multiple Sandhis, Nakshatra Sandhis, etc. And in Venus Dasha, he actually aired that Harry and Meghan uh, Netflix serial, which actually started the entire downfall. Okay. So you can see a whole bunch of other things. You can also see third from Madura Lagna. We do not like to see that Mars and Ketu over there. Third from Madura Lagna being the eighth from the eighth also becomes the circumstances of our death. All right. We don't want moon over there because what is moon over there? What, what is moon over there where longevity is concerned? Because even where the Lagna is concerned, moon is our body and health and longevity. So what is the moon doing over there in third from Madura Lagna? I mean, it's very bad to have moon over there. People who have moon over there go through tremendous troubles at some time or the other in life. Lot of niggling, naggling troubles, perceived troubles, real troubles. So, so he has, of course, Mars and Ketu out there, as you can see. And uh, you can also see Venus over there couldn't do much. You can also see the Sun, Mercury, Saturn is also trying to influence the Arura Lagna. But my pain point was to bring out what damage the ape from Arura Lagna can do over here. And what a wonderful example this is of the Duke of Sussex. Now, 
uh, we uh, now have over here uh, the horoscope of Abraham Lincoln. Now, this is very interesting. Abraham Lincoln, you can see Arura Lagna is in Mithuna and Moon is placed in 8th from Arura Lagna. Ninth from Arura Lagna, you can see he has a wonderful sun and Mercury. And that Mercury, of course, is also Digbala from Lagna and is very beneficial from him. Now, Lincoln was born in poverty and he was self-educated. And uh, uh, then he kind of completely, he was interested to be in politics. He rose in politics. He, everything was kind of self-made and self-done for him. When he became president, after that, he had constantly to deal with oppositions and factions, both from the Republicans as well as the Democratic parties. Constantly he had to deal with them, he had to rally them all the time. This was throughout his life. And eventually you can see that he was assassinated in Saturn Saturn. Now, Saturn is also the moon sign lord, which is aspecting the third house from, uh, all right, it is a, over here, it is a moon sign lord and aspecting having Rahadrishti on the third house from the Arura Lagna. So Saturn is actually as the moon's dispositor, as the Shubhapati did not give him Shubha results. The Shubhapati is supposed to, the dispositor of the, of the moon, is supposed to nourish you and is supposed to uh, carry you through life and sustain you. But here Saturn was uh, unable to do that. Saturn was unable to do that. So moment Saturn Dasha came in, Saturn, Saturn, he got assassinated because Saturn gave the, almost gave the results of the moon being in the eighth from Arura Lagna. So that negative thing and with having his drishti on the tent, it gave its protection, uh, gave its uh, annihilation. I would say that the Mercury and Sun who are in Lagna, Sun is good in Lagna, Mercury, Digbala in Lagna. Mercury is his Atma Karaka. So the Atma Karaka shall always protect. And so Mercury has tried to protect the image, whatever it can, from the nine from Arura Lagna. So you can see that though he has that, and of course, this is a dual uh, uh, lordship. And because with the dual large lordship, one Arura Lagna you are uh, getting is over here in Tula, right? And the other Arura Lagna you are getting is with with uh, uh, with uh, Saturn. So you can see that the benefits he's getting. So he's got that mixed result. But because of this, he has faced the problem throughout all his life, all his life battling, all his life. At the same time being the president and, you know, he's such a well-loved president, but at the same time also, uh, he's experienced the death because of the moon could not sustain the Aruda out here. And that assassination is a very, very bad thing to happen to anybody. Now look at this horoscope of Albert Einstein. In Albert Einstein's case, of course, you can see Arura Lagna again is in Virgo. Moon is in third from Arura Lagna and it is debilitated. Now what happens is Atma Karaka Shukra. You can see four planets over there. In Atma Karaka and Shukra Dasha, he had gone to Switzerland and he became the Swiss citizen over there. He, uh, I didn't give you the details because of lack of space, but he adopted it in the university. He studied in uh, many of the, he was employed in many of the, um, you know, the institutes, uh, the Max Planck Institute and a lot of other institutes. He held positions of distinction, but finally he moved back to Germany uh, towards the end of Shukra Dasha. Again, he, of course, excelled professionally, not only in Switzerland, but also uh, there in uh, uh, Germany. Now, as soon as Mars Dasha started, now Mars is again Shubhapati or the dispositor of Moon, and Moon is placed badly from Arura Lagna, the Holocaust happened. So what happened at that time, this was in 1933, he had actually visited, he had just gone to the US for a visit. And at that time, this happened, moment Mars Dasha started, Mars Bar. Mm -hmm. So what happened, he could not return back home anymore. So he was stuck in US and then he stayed on in the US and he never returned uh, from there. Uh, so uh, all these conditions happened. Yes, it is that Mars 
which is with Yuti Raho gives that bomb yoga by which he actually creates the bomb and things like this. But uh, he went through a very tough time. When the Jewish thing happened, he was very, very pained. But even in Switzerland, when he went away, he was not very happy with the German, the situation that was happening in Germany. That's the reason why he went to Switzerland and he had taken the Swiss citizenship and he excelled so brilliantly over there at work as, and later on only he came back in Germany and he worked. And so he had, and then later on, he got the citizenship and he had a dual citizenship. And then back again, when he goes over there uh, in US, then the Holocaust happened and he was a Jew. So he experienced this very badly. Imagine, we can't imagine this, that you just like, imagine I've just gone to Leeds and I get stuck over there for the rest of my life. I would be completely shocked and been in a, a state of permanent trauma. And that, at, that also at an older age in life. But because, uh, you know, uh, his uh, otherwise look at the, look at the seventh house from Arura Lagna is very strong and there you you have a very strong Shukra and all the other grahas which have actually um, uh, nourished and given him that's the cause he had the fame and etc you know and he did so well now this is a horoscope that I couldn't crack actually there are many horoscopes which I did not share where the moon was placed in either third or eighth from Arura Lagna. And you can see that, you know, how the person has had a difficult life, though they may have got fame and success. Now, this is very, very interesting in the case of uh, uh, Queen Elizabeth. Uh, as you can see, the Arura Lagna is in... Um, Arura Lagna is actually in here in uh, Kumbha in Aquarius. And you can see that the moon is placed in sixth from the Arura Lagna. Sorry, it is not eighth, it is in the sixth from Arura Lagna. And in sixth from Arura Lagna also, it is supposed to be uh, not a good placement, right? We said sixth is also turmoil. But Queen Elizabeth actually did not have a very turmoil filled life. She had a very unblemished life, all right? And uh, they say that even after Princess Diana's death, even that whatever little criticism would have come her way, whatever little, uh, you know, fall in the popularity of the monarchy may have come, it didn't really, really affect her. People say that it actually didn't affect or tarnish her image at all. She was actually an untarnished person and absolutely. So, and there was no, not much of it, not really any turmoil that she experienced in life. So we can say that because the moon is, of course, in Soshetra. And over here, Ketu is, of course, very much exalted, etc. So this is something I, uh, you know, could not have. I was wondering, why do we have the moon over there? But you can see that Chandra, and when, when moon is uh, in its own sign, when a graha is in its own sign, the result is given by the exaltation lord. And in this case, it is uh, Jupiter. And Jupiter, though debilitated, is nourishing the Arura Lagna. So the Arura Lagna has a Venus and has a Jupiter and Mercury to nourish it. And you can see that Venus is also the ninth lord from Arura Lagna and is nourishing. That's also the Venus is the source of nourishment, the source of protection, which has protected her all her life out there. And so is Jupiter who has done this. Now, I'm uh, unaware how we are doing regarding time. Uh, uh, Paul can uh, tell me what my uh, time frame looks like. But otherwise, I can go into the next slot, which is uh, Moon is in 6th and 11th uh, from Arura Lagna. Now, Moon in 6th from Arura Lagna. Here we have the horoscope of Adolf Hitler. Now, Adolf Hitler is somebody who has a really badly tarnished Arura. He's a very famous person, right? He got elected in uh, Germany. He was the chancellor of Germany. So that Arura is nourished. But at the same time, you know, the Arura is damaged because of the negative uh, image that he had. 
and also because he was compelled to take his own life and commit suicide by what had happened to his end. This is, these are all lies that you know, so you can very well relate to what it is. So moon in six from Arura Lagna turmoil, and you can see that from 1939 to 1945, that is from Rahu Mercury to Rahu Sun. That's when World War II started. And that's when Hitler's downfall started. Till then, you know, in 1933, he was elected chancellor. And there he was, you know, head of the party, head of the Reich, head of the Gestapo. He was really uh, ruling the roost out there. But his downfall really started the moment World War II came in. And that the whole thing happened between 39 and 45, culminating in his suicide. All right. Now, Rahu, as you can see, is the natural fifth lord of power. Uh, it is in MKS in the ninth house from Lagna, but it is Ucha and in the seventh house, okay, it is Ucha and it is in the twelfth from Arura Lagna. Now, here you can see. In Arura Lagna, we can see there is Saturn. And in 12th from Arura Lagna, we see there is an Ucha, highly exalted Rahu, who is also, of course, MKS, which means that they are influencing the Arura Lagna. They are actually giving him all the uh, nurturing, the or not the nurturing, all the influence on the Arura Lagna, which means that they are damaging and affecting. Rahu, Rahu does damage. They are not nourishing. They are not Shubhagrahas who are nourishing over there. All right, they are damaging. Okay, you must keep this in mind. So, uh, Chakra Dasha also, the Chakra Dasha of the fifth house, all right, starts in 1937. So you can see Chakra Dasha of the fifth house is Lord is Rahu. The natural fifth house is the house of power and position the house of Rahu. So in 1939, it all begins with Germany's invasion of Poland. And when he does that, Britain and France declares war on Germany. Then in 1941, Germany invades the USSR. In 1941, again, Germany declares war on USA. Then by in 1941 itself, Germany occupies most of Europe and it has its war against North and North Africa. 1945, Germany has defeated the entire Allies, the whole Allied army. But by then, the Allied armies were closing in, and he knew that. So he got married in 1945, and he committed suicide in 1945. And this entire thing from 39 to 45 occurs between Avimshotari, Rahu Mercury, and Rahu uh, Sun, where this entire thing takes place. These, as you can see, both the planets are 10 from his Arura Lagna. So his karma, what karma are you doing? Is it good karma or bad karma? If you are doing bad karma, then you are reaping the effects of that bad karma. And then the Arura is not being sustained at all. Okay, the Arura is getting damaged over there. So uh, this is an example, as you can see, of Adolf Hitler. You can see many more things out there. Moon over there, as you can see, is with Ketu. So Moon is eclipsed, okay, is also with Jupiter. And of course, this combination is in the third house of Lagn from Lagna, on the Rashi Chakra. The third house of the Rashi Chakra is at Dushchikya Bhava, meaning all our thoughts which are there. <laughs> if they are good planets, we do good thoughts. If they are bad planets, we do bad thoughts. Is the domain of Mars. So Moon over there, along with the third lord, if third lord is placed in the third house, if that is Jupiter over there, it means that our my mind or his mind is focused on conflict. If the third lord is placed in third house, it means our mind is focused on conflicts and battles and antagonism. Here, Jupiter is the third lord in third house. So that is not a good thing at all because Jupiter is supposed to be the Karaka or the harbinger of peace. And here, he, you are becoming a harbinger of conflict. And we have the Chandra himself over there along with Ketu. And this whole combination is in the sixth house from Arura Lagna. So turmoil. All right. Now, let me move to the uh, next example. This is the example of George W. Bush Jr. George W. Bush Jr. also has moon in the 11th from Arura Lagna. 
Okay, as you can see that the Arura Lagna is in Scorpio and Moon along with Jupiter is based in 11 from it in Virgo. Now you can see that again here that that Moon and Jupiter is in Dushchitya Bhava from the Rashi Chakra. Now though he was a very popular president at Bani, but he did experience a lot of tarnish of uh, his image. And uh, this happened is when his presidency saw the turbulence during the 9-11. Now this 9-11, as you know, that the destruction of the twin, twin globe towers of the World Trade Center occurred in September 2011. And then the world changed and the world has never been the same. And this was followed by a declaration of war on terror. And with the declaration of war and terror, he created the infamous Department of Homeland Security in the US. And he was very focused in ending terror. He was very focused on demolishing uh, the Al-Qaeda. He was very focused on um, uh, he was also very focused on uh, killing Osama bin Laden. That became his focus. So with that end in mind, the Department of Homeland Security was formed. He had invaded Afghanistan. So the whole Taliban issue, you remember, has to happen. He invaded Iraq. We know what happened with the Saddam Hussein issue out there. That was a very nasty experience. And all this he did because his aim was to demolish both Taliban, Al-Qaeda, and to annihilate Osama bin Laden and Saddam Hussein. And all this happened in Moon Utpanna Vimshoshitari Dasha. Moon in the third house over there, if you can see from Rashi Chakra. And this moon is based in 11th house from uh, Arura Lagna, which means that that is uh, not a good position at all. And that is a period of uh, turmoil. Of course, the image would be kind of protected. You can see that there is Shukra and Buddha over there. Uh, you can study all the in ninth from uh, Arura Lagna. Okay. So that experience, it was a very turbulent time, uh, no doubt. Okay, now just let me quickly give you some uh, examples, some pictures of uh, moon uh, people, of famous people. We already talked about Sri Ram and we already talked about Sri Krishna. Now, this is very simple. We talked about Mahatma Gandhi. So these uh, examples are really no-brainers. You can see Arura Lagna, uh, is in Cancer uh, and with Moon in Cancer over there with Rahu though. So he has, I mean, he's an extremely famous man. In the world, if you ask anybody who doesn't even know anything about, uh, uh, about India, but everybody knows Mahatma Gandhi, everybody, the father of the nation as he's called. So he has Chandra in Arura Lagna and it is Swashetra. All right, it is Swashetra. It is his Atma Karaka as well. So it is a Raja Yoga of the highest, highest order. Now, look at this uh, uh, this horoscope of your king. Uh, this is Charles III, the king of England. Uh, Arura Lagna in Tula and Chandra in seventh from Arura Lagna in the fame axis. There's no, no doubt about whatever has happened in his life. He's exceedingly famous man. He'll be well known and remain remembered with, uh, uh, with this fame, with whatever he has done, being the, uh, as you know, the longest standing monarch in uh, British monarchy or even in European monarchy ever to have waited uh, in line in succession to the throne for God knows how many years, 70 years. And uh, he's very, very famous. So this would have taken you by surprise that Charles III, your King of England, has this. Uh, then we have, now see the chart of Ramana Maharishi. All right, Arura Lagna in Sagittarius. Very quickly, you can see Moon is in the seventh there from. I'm not pointing out the other things, but I'm saying he's a very, very famous person. And Ketu over there, a great saint and a spiritual giant. All right. Let's look at moon, a few charts in moon in 212 from Arura Lagna. 212 from Arura Lagna gives peace and sense of well-being because they are causing Shubha Yoga on the Lagna. So 212, moon being in 212 from Lagna is almost as moon being in Lagna. All right. And look at these surprising examples over here. Swami Vivekananda, moon in second from Arura Lagna. All right. 
affecting uh, Arura Lagna. He is famous for the work that he did. He's famous for establishing uh, the great mat in his guru's name, the Ramakrishna mission. And you can see that that falls in the 10th house from Rashi Chakra as well. And if you see this in the horoscope of Srila Prabhupada, we are seeing the same thing is also uh, over there. Moon being in second from Arura Lagna. He also established ISKCON. It's interesting, isn't it, in both their cases. He also went out abroad to do his guru's work. The guru wanted him to go ahead and do this. And he established this huge ISKCON uh, temple. Other things, as I said, you can uh, read from there. So uh, I have uh, ended uh, with my case studies. I hurried uh, it over there a little bit. And uh, uh, so uh, with this, I end my presentation. And uh, I would be very, very happy to take all your questions and whatever more details you may uh, wish to know. So it's over to you, Paul. Thank you very much, Sabani. Uh, excellent. I'm absolutely delighted and thank you for your contributions. Um, I have a couple of questions before I uh, finish and then we'll hand over to the people in the room. Um, uh, just a couple of things. Um, he started off, of course, with 7,000 from the Ruda Lagna versus the Ruda Lagna. Uh, so if the 7,000 from the Ruda Lagna is stronger, so that becomes the effective Ruda Lagna, if I understand it. So you count from there to the moon in that particular instance, if the yes. sun house is stronger. Mm -hmm. uh, let me take any one of the examples here, just to make it easier for you. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, Okay, I mean, this is seventh house is not stronger, but I'm just giving you this example. Yeah. So basically what happens, these are, uh, you know, the students often deal with this. There are multiple things which uh, come up with that. When we have the Arura Lagna, this is what we are born with. You know, you are born with this. That goes without saying. So when we study the Arura Chakra, that is the Bhava from Arura Lagna, we are actually doing this from the originally calculated Arura. But then what happens, uh, this Arura sh can shift, can shift, I said. And this can shift can happen in multiple ways. It can happen if, so in this case, there are more planets in Arura Lagna. But sometimes if there were three planets in Mesha instead of in Tula, then over time, Mesha would have become stronger and you would have been identified by planets over there. You would be tending to do things associated with planets over there. That is number one. Number two, that can also happen in a reverse way that because you are doing different things, your profession may change, the kind of activities you are three, uh, doing may change. Hence, your Arura may change. So the Arura shifts. So Arura can shift. This is a very, very, uh, you know, this is something that we all study and we all do. But yes, if it is so, in this case, it doesn't change. Um, in this case, also, it doesn't change. Um, you, would, you would count from the effective Arura Lagna to the moon. Yeah, yeah. Effective Arura Lagna to the moon. Yes, yes. No, I would count from the original Arura Lagna always. From the always. calculated Arura Lagna. Yes. So from the, See, I'll the tell Arura you where Lagna. placement, yeah, where placement of moon becomes uh, in, uh, crucial. I have not taken, um, I think I'll tell you this one. Uh, uh, Abraham Lincoln has a dual <clears throat> lord. All right. Mm -hmm. Whenever we have a dual lordship of Lagna, we have to choose that which Lagna lord is furnishing the Arura Lagna. That is the first choice that we have to make. Now, the way we go about it is we decide, we have to choose that between Saturn and Rahu, who is stronger? And depending on who is stronger, that the Arura that is furnished by that Graha will be stronger. In this case, we have chosen Rahu to be stronger by the simple rule that Rahu is with more planets uh, than with Saturn. 
sometimes it can be yeah it's the rules of strength rules of strength so sometimes you have to make a judgment call sometimes suppose satin uh maybe alone but satin is in big bala and exalted then you would think oh which one do we choose satin is in alone and in big bala and exalted but rahu is with another planet or another two planets so you need to take a call and sometimes the dignity of the planet takes the upper hand and so you will choose so now in this case it is rahu very clearly because satin is not in dignity and so we uh, choose the arura lagna provided by rahu which happens to be mithuna so mithuna uh, obviously will be strong out here now uh, in this case they say we've said that at some point even the saturn arura can also kick in and it all depends the kind of activities you are doing etc etc you know okay. it can kick in so arura is very tricky and you will have to do this but in this case because the lordship is dual so wherever you are counting moon's placement has to be seen from the calculated main calculated arura and not from the shifted arura or changed arura okay thank you if um if the arura lagna is conjunct the atma karika hmm. um that presumably provides protection uh, hmm. would that um overcome any uh planet malefic planets in the ninth house or say moon in the eighth house yeah uh, so so here you know it all depends on also the natural guna of the planet see where because it is moon so natural benefics will support moon and malefics do not support moon mars does not support moon the nodes do not support moon so yeah. that factor something that you will have to keep in mind look at the case of lincoln again mercury is a somya graha it's a it's a benefic planet and mercury is also atma karaka yeah oh, excuse me and it is also in digvala in lagna so it is in line from arura lagna that means that mercury has the power to grant that arura lagna protection he of course went in the power of mercury he went in the power of the work that he did one of his main thrust of work was to uh, remove uh, uh, how shall i put it the uh, the entire anti slavery thing that we are talking mm -hmm. about and that is mercury's realm mercury doesn't like divisions and mercury doesn't like control between upper and lower so if we are talking about a harmony with uh, everybody being kind of equal mercury also with no violence out there mercury likes ahimsa and non violence so he went in the path of mercury and if a graha is digbala and you are going in the planet of the digbali grahas then that graha supports you that is also your atma karaka and that planet is also is nine from arura lagna and protecting your arura over there so that mercury was very 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 positive for him so you know that was very good so here definitely rahu out there would try to i mean the very fact that the placement of moon is not good that is why he experienced a uh, obstacle throughout his life even when he was president both from his own party as well as from the opposition okay um <laughs> i've noticed you put the navamsha up um can you apply this uh, approach to the rudra lagna and the moon to the varga chart uh no i do not apply it in the navamsha i apply it only in the rashi chart okay and uh, the final question very simply you said that the third lord in the third house mars being the karaka um the mind is focused on conflicts and you used the example of a uh, adult hitler um he has the moon with his third lord so is he was he focused on conflicts because of the moon plus the third lord in the third house or is it yeah. simply third lord in the third house by itself brings the mind is focused on yes. conflict irrespective of the moon placement yes 
So, uh, Paul, as uh, uh, you know, you would have heard me speak yesterday. I spoke at length on this point, uh, third uh, mm. Lord in the third house. It actually oh. is that because um, uh, it is because here the third, the there are both things are happening. To answer your question, okay, Jupiter, the third <clears throat> Lord in the third house. The third bhava is called the Dushchikya bhava or the house from where is the root of our thoughts. So wherever the third lord is going, our root of our thoughts are over there. So for example, if you have third lord in the 10th house, your thoughts are always on work. You're thinking about work, 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 work all the time. If third lord is in the third house, your root of your thought is in conflicts. Third house is to do with conflicts and uh, antagonism you are always dealing with that no matter the fact that it is jupiter out there but here jupiter as third house is not good and now moon is also joined over there moon okay, is so also cool. conjoined over there so the mind is also over there third lord is over there even the moon itself is over there the ketu is over there it's uh, eclipsing the moon and this whole configuration is six from arura lagna so he faced that entire thing he faced and this entire turmoil of his, uh, I mean, you know, he faced what he did. So we <laughs> one doesn't need to, that's why one chooses charts like this, because everybody is very well aware of their lives. He committed suicide eventually. And that entire Second World War happens in uh, that, uh, in between Rahu Mercury and Rahu Sun. Okay. I will end here and... Um... I will hand over to, um, we've gone on quite a while, but uh, that's okay. Um, and we'll take some questions and answers from the people in the room, um, if the technology works. But I'd just like to finish and say thank you. I'm very grateful, Abani, for, for um, your presentations. And I uh, appreciate all your teachings. And um, I hope you and Sanjay have good health going forward. I know there's been a few problems, but hopefully that can be overcome. And uh, I'm very grateful for your contributions to this conference. Thank, Thank you very, you. very much, uh, Lee. Uh, Paul, it's uh, my pleasure. The honor is entirely mine to be able to present. And the loss is mine that I could not be there physically. Uh, as I said, I was so looking forward to this. But maybe uh, another time uh, when it's more conducive. As we said that it was Durga Puja. And, uh, you know, during this time, husband and wife are supposed to be together uh, with your family like you have in Christmas and uh, so uh, uh, maybe this is what the mother wanted and it was her way to ensure that we both land up here uh, being together so uh, next there will be another time where I'm really hoping and wishing that I shall be physically present with you all so thank you once again and yes if anybody has any questions I would uh, be happy to take them Okay, I will now end the recording. Thank you very much. Thank you.